I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching the Cube. Live from San Francisco, it's the Cube covering Oracle Open World 2016. Brought to you by Oracle. Now here's your host, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Okay, welcome back, everyone. We are here live in San Francisco for Oracle Open World 2016. This is SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube. It's our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Perth, my co-host, Peter Burris, for three days of wall-to-wall -wall cover. Dan Miller, Senior Vice President of Oracle for ISV and OEM and Java Sales. Uh, back on The Cube, out on Howard Street last year, inside, we had the big stage in the hall. Welcome back. Thanks, great to be here again. So people are changing their business, obviously, transforming their business with the cloud. That's a clear message, and there is a cloud quota, according to Chuck Hollis, yesterday where you know, he was you know heard that term kicked around where customers are looking for you know that mandate how we do with the cloud how we do, so clearly the customers your customers are moving and your customers customers are moving to the cloud what is the status of the ISVs because they're on the front lines is the uptake strong on the platform from last year give us the update and what's happening this year so first of all thanks for having me back again hard to believe a year has gone by um, I'd say you mentioned that the customer demand and then the partner demand. The customer demand, it's as high as I've seen it ever. You know, the last statistic I saw from one analyst was 84% of CIOs have actually cloud plans going and moving into production now. So, you know, it's not a question of if it's happening on the customer side, it's just when and how they're going to do it. On the partner side, it's converging right with that demand. So I think some of the partners and Oracle were pushing to customers before. Now I think it's kind of a combined push and pull. The demand is off the charts from, from our partners to say, how do I get my services into production? Is there a distinction between private cloud and public cloud from a customer standpoint? Because now Oracle has the on-prem cloud capability. Juan Luese yesterday was very clear. We want our customers to move their Oracle on-prem to the cloud and be seen with same code base, all the goodness that you guys are announcing. Do the customers distinguish between private cloud and public cloud, or is it all one thing now? Last year we talked about a little bit about that. I, I think they do, and I think over time that distinction will go away. Oracle doesn't distinguish uh, between public and private in the sense that all of our IP and the workloads built around it, both ours and partners, can seamlessly move back and forth between public and private, or what we have, which is our customer, um, our cloud at customer uh, implementation. So that workload is a public cloud instance behind the firewall. It doesn't matter if it's that Oracle cloud machine, a private cloud instance, a public uh, cloud instance, our workloads and Oracle's IP make it uh, seamless to move back and forth. So we don't really Really differentiate, uh, differentiate on that perspective. A customer may, but that's a deployment option for them. It doesn't matter what they say. We can do it any way they want. Last year we talked and you had thousands of customers already in kind of like, I won't say pilot mode, but I think it was like trial as a platform, as a service, kind of getting in, involved. Yeah. What's been the learnings that you've seen from that period, and what's the status of the ISVs today? What's their mindset? Are they thinking, okay, add value with code? Are they looking at it from a, obviously customer perspective? But what's, where are they now in that progress uh, journey uh, with the, the platform as a service and some of the things that they're adding value on? Can you get, share some examples? I can, and the, the first thing that I think most of our partners are thinking about isn't necessarily cloud. And you may say, why do I say that? Remember, a lot of their businesses and the revenue coming from it, in some cases, 80, 90, 100% is still an on-premise business. So one of the things that they're telling us is, even though they want to get to cloud with us, they want to cloudify their services, they're saying, Oracle, keep taking care of my on-premise business. And we help them do that, whether it's optimizing their on-premise solutions on our Exa platform, whether it's integrating with Oracle applications, we're still committed to do that 100%. A lot of that business, like uh, Larry Ellison talked about, it's gonna stay that way for five, 10, 15, 20, years, we're not going to abandon that. I think some other partners or companies are selling, saying to people, look, we're just going to support you on the cloud, nothing else. The second part, though, 
as people are building out their migration to cloud, I think they're doing it, our partners, and we're recommending we do it this way in kind of three distinct steps. One is lift and shift their applications into our cloud. I'd say lift and shift in anybody's cloud, but we have the best public cloud to do that, uh, bar none. The second thing is, though, well, Oracle has—they don't have the lift; they just have the shift. That's—that's that's I mean, correct. that's if you think about well, it. Not lift, really lifting, right? I mean, just moving. The lift and shift is completely easy because the workloads that they built and all the competency they have in their IP and RIP, it just moves seamlessly into that public cloud instance. And that's probably the easiest part of the process. Easier than a lot of partners think. Second part though, we're really focused on, focusing on scaling those applications. Especially for our partners that focus on the enterprise, which is most of them, most enterprises are saying, don't just give me a small instance, you gotta show that you have scale in your application. So we do that with things like our extreme database service, um, our exit data as a service. That helps uh, scale out uh, current uh, workloads and applications. The third part though, is the thing we actually start with in our designs or our conversations with our partners, which is how do we enrich your service to supplement it with things like big data, IOT, visualization, and this changes the game for Oracle and our partners. I think the other public cloud providers are saying, yeah, I can lift and shift too. When you get into scale in the enterprise, when you get into enriched performance in the enterprise, that is something that Oracle is uniquely positioned to do, and we bring the full breadth of Oracle developed IP to do that. So it's lift and shift, scale, and enrich your applications, and we start on the enriched state and work back into scale and lift and shift. And most of our customers, which you brought up, they want to hear about what's beyond the current on-premise application. And that's great value for the customer, but that's a value proposition for our partners too. They make more money with an enriched application than just a shifted application. So, Peter Drucker famously said, that the purpose of business is to create and sustain customers. I agree. So every ISV that has a customer wants to sustain that customer if they want to stay in business, just as Oracle does. Yes. And given the, some of the numbers that you quoted up front, that whatever it was, 84% of most larger IT organizations have a significant cloud component, going back to John's quota statement, and are actually putting numbers into their budget that says, this workload, we will invest more in these workloads. Yes. You gotta bring your ecosystem to the cloud. It has to happen. Yes. And you mentioned that, you know, lift and shift and some of the options. But at the end of the day, the ISV is still going to be responsible for performing some tasks to make it easy for customers to move. Talk a little bit about what a typical ISV is going to have to do, the kind of commitments that they're going to make with Oracle in front of a customer to say, here's where you are, here's where you want to be, here's how we're going to get you there. Talk, talk us through that roadmap. I'll do that in general, and then I'll give a couple specific examples about how some of our partners are not only retaining their customers, but growing their customer base. So, in fact, I'll just, I'll start with there to be very specific. Um, SaaS, one of the most globally well-known brands, one of our most strategic partners, has worked across many vertical markets for many years. We have tens of thousands of instances or customers together. They're absolutely committed to keeping those customers, but to your point, they want to extend that customer relationship over time. So what they've done is gone to customers like Macy's, big retail brand, and said, hey, everything that we were doing in our analytics platform, we scaled it before by putting it on this uh, Exadata platform from Oracle. So that continued the life cycle uh, for some years. Now they're doing the same thing in Oracle's public cloud and they're going to enrich that um, environment even more with vis visualization, uh, big data analytics. So it's gone from a couple year experience to a multi-year experience. I think SaaS will stay sticky with Macy's for a long time to come. By extending what they're doing, they're not coming back and say, well, here's a new solution, brand new, the workload doesn't move, doesn't have anything to do, and to the customers, Macy, 
you've got to start over. What Macy's like is the investment that they made with SaaS years ago has been extended over the past couple years and will be going forward. Um, another example is IQMS. Maybe you haven't heard of it, smaller brand, mid-market manufacturing ERP partner here in the United States, just down the road in Paso Robles, California. A um, little over a thousand customers. So Gary Nemmer is the CEO when he and I first met. The first thing he said is, we have to preserve our customers. But he said, I want to go beyond that. I want to add more value to them. Good for his customers, but good for his revenue too. So how is he doing that? He's already gone to every customer that he has and says, as I'm going into the Oracle Public Cloud, which he has now, I have a backup and recovery service for you. And in some cases, he'll charge for it. In some cases, he may just enable it. Immediately, his customer base's response is, I want to do that, and I want to do that as an extension to the core applications that you've already done. He's creating a kind of a longer term life cycle with his customer base. By the way, uh, that enriched state, take uh, visualization. So he's taking the data that comes in from his customers and helping his own customers visualize, analyze that data. The response rate, he got that service going up within the last month. He has immediate response from his customer base about buying it within 30 days. So that should help Gary protect his base, but also grow his revenue base in his current base and get it outside of his base as well. But is Gary and some of the other examples, you know, Macy's is right around the corner here yes. as well, Macy's.com is, but is, is Gary, who historically has been a provider of applications yes. on top of Oracle technology as a bundle to the customer, and then has stepped back, helped with, you know, level one, two, three support, helped with integration, helped choose partners, some, doing all good things for their customers. But that's different from taking on more responsibility for actually helping them move into a new infrastructure. So how is how is Gary's business and business model evolving so that they can so that he and his team can have that conversation about we will help you move into the cloud? I think in two ways. One is he's been an Oracle-based partner for more than 20 years. He has a deep long-term investment in that. He's going to leverage that as much as possible. He's got other public cloud provider options. He's actually been in another public cloud. He's converting out of that. And the reason why he's doing that, he wants to take advantage of his investment. He's got a lot of smart people, a lot of competency built up. He's going to leverage that. That's the first thing. And he'll pass that on to his customer base. The second thing, though, is for his current installed base, he's going to add services to that. He's set, still selling his core applications to his base, but he sees a revenue stream of additional services over and above that. Now, to take that on in his company, I think if they are disconnected, disparate, non-leveraged services, that's a big burden on his right. company. The great thing is his team knows Oracle IP, it's easy for them to connect into additional Oracle IP-based services that already easily connect. His team isn't doing the integration. His team isn't doing you know, the additional work to make those services work. I mean, they don't have to do it. They don't have to do exactly. it. Exactly, so John, you made a great point in the opening session about how Oracle is showing more of its technical chops to the marketplace. Yeah. This is one of the reasons to do so, is to get more of those technical people out front yeah. so partners, ISVs, and customers can have greater visibility into yeah. the enormous engineering and talent set here to actually ensure that these things happen more easily and more simply. So the, the greatest single value, in my opinion, that Oracle has to our ISV and OEM partners, as well as our customers, is the wealth of intellectual property all the way up north in the stack, up through uh, infrastructure, has, and the application that they're bringing full bear to our Oracle Public Cloud. What I would challenge another cloud provider to do, one of the biggest ones who's just working at the infrastructure layer, is how will they do that for partners and customers? My personal view is they will add pieces and parts, but then come back to the partner, the customer, and say, you need to stitch that together. And that becomes a big cost or a burden to the partner. 
So in the IQMS example or the SaaS example, those companies are taking advantage of the competency that they have in Oracle IP, and the Oracle IP is integrated together all the way up the stack. My other opinion is it is much, much harder to, de to develop north up the stack into the PaaS and the application layer, and our partners would say, yeah, developing their application is harder too than it is to build out the infrastructure layer. I like our hand going forward. That's incredible. a great point. You just answered my next final question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. I'm clairvoyant. <laughs> You're so good. <laughs> but let's put this in terms of the customer. Sure. I'm a CIO now, and we're just having a one-on-one -on -one kind of a coffee. You're the senior vice president of Oracle. I'm a CIO. Yes. Dan, my CEO and CFO now understand the importance of the cloud. I need help. How is Oracle and the ISVs going to help me? And together. What, together, and what? And how do sure. they work together? What's the configuration? What's the, what should I expect? How should I organize around it? How should I operationalize it? Okay, I'll make this a very real example. I had coffee with the CIO of one of the biggest energy companies in the world this morning. I'm not going to say who it is. We had a confidential conversation, but it's a very real time discussion. It's come in parts in working with this company. The first one, it's just pure education, making sure our partners and that customer knows everything we're bringing to bear at all le levels, from application to platform to infrastructure to our hardware platform and Java. I want to put a plug in for Java there too. So first is education. The second is identifying that enriched state first, not just concentrating on how do we lift and shift current workloads into our public cloud. In fact, his response is, that's interesting to me, probably not the most value that I can take back into my CEO or CFO and board. Yeah, does that solve your problem or my problem? That's correct. <laughs> well, what he would say is, that's good for you, fills out your public cloud. I like that you're going to do that. His view is that's table stakes. Right. He's like, Dan, that's not where I want to stop with you. I expect that at a minimum. You better give me great compute storage and networking, and he's positive we're going to uh, do that for him. So he wants to get to that enriched state, which is how do we add IoT, big data, visualization to the services that are coming from partners that he can then turn into translated, increased value services for his company. The third step is we still need to do some show and tell to him. And the best way I can do that is get into proof of concepts with him. And we start with what is that enriched state? And I'm actually proving that out to him. What we'll do for him, take the services that he wants, get them in our public cloud, live in our public cloud. We'll sector out a part of that. And I'm going to prove to him what that service is, both in the integrated uh, part of it, as well as the performance. He said, great, we're signed up to do that. I just asked him for a joint commitment on that. He's given that to us. It's a great step. Uh, way to do it. By the way, there's more work to do there because we have more to offer in our cloud stack. It's far beyond lift and shift. Dan, thanks so much for coming on and sharing the insight. ISV's really important, critical part of the equation of the cloud, certainly delivering and then having the technology and the transparency up and down the stack for enterprises as they move to the cloud. Obviously CEOs, CIOs clearly are recognizing the importance and economic advantage of the cloud. Thanks for sharing the uh, ISV update and Java plug. Good job, we love Java. Jason, as uh, uh, Juan Luis pointed out yesterday, thanks again. This is theCUBE live in San Francisco here on the show floor. The Cube Stage, I'm John Furrier, Peter Ferris. Thanks for watching, we'll be right back.